All right, we'll call this meeting of the Richfield Planning Commission to order. I'll ask uh, staff for the roll call to note attendance. Attendance noted. Thank you. Uh, approval of minutes for the regular Planning Commission meeting of January 25th, 2016. So moved. Second. All right, motion seconded. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Ayes have it. Uh, Next, we have an opportunity for citizens to address the Planning uh, Commission on items not on the agenda. If anybody wishes to speak, uh, can proceed to the, the podium. All right, uh, on to public hearing items. Item number one uh, is to consider a request for a variance to allow a fence to exceed six feet in height at the Richfield Water Plant at 6399 Oakland Avenue. Uh, and staff to the report. Thank you, Chair Kitzberger. Uh, in July 2015, the Richfield Water Treatment Facility experienced a perimeter breach that resulted in a review of their security measures. A previous review of these security measures at the facility recommended installing an eight-foot tall fence around the perimeter of the property. A 2007 memo from Richfield Public Safety uh, is attached to your report detailing the recommended changes. At, that time, a at the time of that report, a decision was made to only install an eight-foot-tall fence along Portland Avenue, but to leave the existing shorter chain-link fence around the rest of the property. Richfield Public Works is now looking to install an eight-foot-tall fence around the remaining perimeter of the water plant property uh, to better protect the facility. Uh, the Policy considerations are that uh, the, the zoning code states no fence or wall more than six feet in height shall be constructed anywhere on a lot except, uh, except in the commercial and industrial districts, uh, which allow eight foot tall fences. This uh, water plant property and all of Veterans Park um, is zoned single family residential. Therefore, a variance from the code is required. Uh, all of the findings necessary to approve this variance are met. I just wanted to point out one, um, and that's that there are no unusual or unique circumstances that apply to the property, which are not which were not created to the applicant, or and or do not apply to other properties in the same zone or facility or vicinity. Um, and that's a, the security of the water treatment facility and the city's water supply is of the utmost importance. Uh, these circumstances do not apply to other pro to other properties within the single-family residential district or in the city as a whole. Um, all of the all of the other criteria are met, um, and staff is recommending approval of this variance. And that concludes the staff report. Thank you, staff. Um, this is a public hearing, so anybody who wishes to address the planning commission on this topic uh, may do so at this time. Uh, seeing no one come forward, I'll need a motion and a second to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. All right, all those in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, questions or comments of planning commissioners for staff? Um, yeah, I just wanted to clarify in the memo from public safety, it describes recommending like a razor wired topped fence. Is that what's proposed or is something like the iron fence that's currently there? It would be, uh, yeah, the, the city code does not actually, does not allow barbed wire, or razor wire, anything like that. Okay. Um, they're proposing a, a sort of decorative, a decorative non-scalable um, iron fence like what, what you see today along Portland Avenue. Okay. No, no razor wire or anything like that. Other questions? Do you know why an eight foot fence was not originally installed and why they went with six feet? You know, I don't know why they. I don't know why they opted to not install that at the time um, when the when that safety memo came out back in 2007. I think um, they looked at that the you know that the rest of the perimeter was still fenced, um, and just looked to upgrade the security along Portland Avenue at the time, but are now seeking to just do the rest of the perimeter um, due to due to a perimeter breach that occurred this summer. Okay, thank you. Just one question. Uh, from a process perspective, is there a reason why staff felt that it was better to go with a variance as opposed to just rezoning something that is obviously not single family residential? Um, all, well, the, actually the, the water plant facility sits on the same parcel of land as all of Veterans Park um, and all, 
all parks, schools, and all sorts of uh, quasi-public land in the city are all zoned single-family residential. Thanks. Any further questions of staff? Uh, if not, I'll ask for a, a motion and a second to approve the item. I move that we approve the variance. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, on to the second item, uh, which is to conduct and close a public hearing and by motion uh, recommend approval of an amendment to the plan unit development, conditional use permit, and final development plan for 6501 Wood Lake Drive, uh, which is Village Shores and Market Plaza, and to staff for the report. Thank you. Just a little quick background here. The Market Plaza development and the Woodlake Point Condominiums develop next, development next door were originally approved as part of a single planned unit development in 1984. A commercial improvement program for that area had been adopted by the HRA in 1975. And so for a number of years, the city had been looking to redevelop that area. It was described as inefficient, underutilized, fragmented, and with a confusing inner block circulation pattern. Um, just for your... Um, for knowledge and because I thought it was interesting. I went back and found some historical pictures of this area. It really was, if anyone remembers, quite a mess over there. Um, there were sidewalks on certain portions of a road, but they just dead-ended. Um, other parking lots just came right out to the street. Um, lots of tiny little buildings. And then a couple of single-family homes sprinkled in the middle. It was, it was quite a mess. Uh, the program identified a need for rehabilitated commercial development new multifamily housing, and improved vehicle and pedestrian circulation. The mixed-use development uh, that's there now addressed many of those identified issues. So here we are 30 years later. Market Plaza is proposing changes to improve and better align their existing development with the current market. The proposed amendment repurposes existing underutilized space to allow for an additional 50 housing units and reconfigured commercial space for a large medical office tenant. The additional units and amenities will allow the owners to offer a continuum of care for senior residents, moving from a strictly independent living facility that one to, to one that offers independent, assisted, and memory care units. A new primary entrance would be constructed facing 66th Street. The existing lower level guest parking area would be enclosed in order to provide new amenity space for residents. And also there would be an a, improved facade along 65th Street, and uh, I distributed an additional perspective view uh, for the commissioners before this meeting. Uh, the commercial space would be reconfigured to accommodate a 16,000 square foot medical office user, that's Hennepin County Medical Center. Exterior changes related to that uh, medical center would include a significantly remodeled building facade, which is also shown um, on your plans in some of the perspective. So the issue here is really one of uh, an, an, a legally non-conforming site. This site met the requirements um, under which it was built in 1984, but um, our ideas about development now are significantly different. It's unlikely that a, um, a, a site with this type of design where the building is situated so far back from the primary intersection in our, in our quote unquote downtown area uh, would be allowed. However, um, making those kinds of changes where you ask someone to move a building are obviously impractical. So our code asks that non-conforming site improvements that affect the appearance and impacts of the site uh, be made. So in this case, we're looking at the lack of activity and interest at that corner and the poor pedestrian connections through the site. The developer is proposing some physical improvements and presence at that corner now, a proposed trellis structure. Uh, two proposed trellis structures will be placed atop a surface that is varied in both grade level and material from the rest of the parking field. The idea is that this would be less attractive for parking um, and really um, instead lend itself to possible community activities, including the farm stand that's there for a few months each summer now and possibly some other temporary vendors or displays. Staffs also discussed the opportunity for incorporation of the Lakes at Lindale branding on the proposed trellis. Some of you may be aware that um, the city's undertaken 
a branding study and a wayfinding study, incorporating some of those ideas into this space here at the corner has been discussed. We're hopeful that in the future, the property owner will consider completely eliminating parking in this area in favor of either permanent quasi-public space or an additional building. It's our feeling that even with the additional 50 units and the medical center, that um, parking on this site will continue to um, exceed the need. Uh, there's also been a stipulation added to the resolution that is going to prohibit snow storage on the site. Um, it is familiar to many of us now, the mountain of snow that piles up at this corner. And instead, we would really like to activate this corner. Piling snow on top of it would um, would be the exact opposite of what we're looking for. In addition to the presence of the corner, staff has stressed the need to improve pedestrian connections around and within the site. Uh, we're gonna pull up a site plan here, but right now, um, some of the movements that pedestrians have to make are actually counterproductive. You're trying to get to the center of that retail area, and it, it, it almost feels like you're moving backwards along the street sidewalks. We have worked hard to come up with a pedestrian connection that will serve the bus stop. We believe that the medical center will significantly increase uh, the number of folks that are operating or um, accessing this site via the bus and then um, need that pedestrian connection either to get to the retail space or the clinic. And so that is the pedestrian connection that we have focused on here. The shape of the site obviously makes this difficult. We think that this is a good proposal. It's not perfect, but it's really the best um, that the developer and staff could come up with together. Other pedestrian improvements are a sidewalk and striping along the private drive, Wood Lake Drive, that separates this development from the Wood Lake Point condominiums, um, really making that connection from this downtown area to Richfield Lake stronger and safer. We know that that is a connection that is used heavily by the residents in this area. And also there's a connection from the sidewalk along 66th Street adjacent to that primary, um, that commercial entrance that will connect either to the new entrance to the residential portion of the building or to the clinic and retail. There are a few um, signage changes that have been requested. This property is zoned PMR, which is a planned multifamily designation. Um, that made sense at the time. The primary focus when it was the condominium building plus Village Shores and then the Market Plaza portion was kind of a, a secondary part of that. So it was zoned to be primarily multifamily. It, it really is a mixed use development though, in a mixed use and commercial corridor. So to have larger signage, uh, more in keeping with the district is appropriate and we've recommended some larger signs there. Finally, um, right, we think in general, the proposed, um, the proposed improvements meet the intent of our code and the um, the requirements related to site design, connectivity, accessibility um, are met without, like I said, requiring impractical changes like moving a building. Uh, David Gevers is here tonight from representing the developer. If you have any questions for him, otherwise staff will stand for questions. Thank you, Ms. Pillman. This is a public hearing, so any members uh, in the audience who would care to comment or have questions uh, for staff uh, can proceed to the podium at this time. Staff first. Sure. Um, in regards to the clinic, is that the same clinic as, as at the hub right now? And so it's gonna relocate yes. to this area? Okay, is it because of needs for more space or more procedures or what? I would imagine it's more space. This is more space than they have at the hub. Although staff has not been in direct contact with Hennepin County Medical okay. Center, that's probably a better question for the developer. Okay. And uh, please state your name for the record. Mm -hmm. 
brighten the area up, and I think that's uh, really important. Do you need my name again? I see I'm on the mic now. It's Warren Multemeyer. Oh, thank you. At Woodlake Point. Thank you. If, and, uh, if all speakers could please uh, sign in with their name. And yes, I certainly them. will. Thank you. Um, and we've been residents at Lake uh, uh, Woodlake Point for about six years, and I've been able to serve on the board uh, during that time and still do. One of the things that I wanted to mention uh, that has to do with us is um, we have parking limitations, as many of you know. We have about 17 spots, I think, in our front parking lot and a few along Woodlake Drive, the street that we own. And um, back when this place was built in 85, 86, um, many of the uh, uh, couples that moved in or singles had one car at that time, now they're two cars. So we run against that obstacle. I know another uh, uh, project that I'm going to support, we all do, I think, at Woodlake, is the, the improvements to 66th Street um, going along um, east to west and so forth. But we're going to lose one parking spot permanently in that process. And uh, we, we've been able to get um, some documents from the city of Ridgefield going back um, to the 85, 86, um, 87 time period. And I'm just going to note the very last one was um, a city, the minutes from the city council meeting in 11 um, 9 of 87, where the city council voted 4 to 0 to, um, well, well, first let me just backtrack this a little bit. There were, um, the final development plan wasn't approved quite yet um, back in those time, and there were eight stipulations. A lot of them had to do with um, fire. Um, code improvements and um, I'm going to get my notes here, fire code improvements as well as things like receiving um, area at, at Shorewood, at Village Shores for deliveries, um, uh, maybe a berm along 65th Street or Avenue, grading details with Wendy's and so forth. But two of the, um, of the uh, stipulations uh, that were a part of the eight um, that were approved by uh, the board carried four to zero at that time, um, they would remain in place and not be rescinded. It had to do with parking. I'm just going to read them real quick, if I may. Um, they're very short. And that is that um, the one was that the condominium owners, which is Woodlake Point, are given priority for use of the apartment garage spaces not needed for apartment tenants. And that would be, of course, at Village Shores. and. Um, this, we haven't had discussion yet with Village Shores. Um, this meeting kind of came up quick, and we wanted to um, bring that to light. The second stipulation was that the condominium and apartment, vis and apartment visitors be permitted to use commercial parking spaces on a short-term basis, um, maybe like where Champs is or in near walking space. Not on long-term, but just short-term space. And I guess we like to... Um, reiterate that we would not like to see adverse effect on us being able to avail ourselves of some overflow parking. I don't think we've abused it at all, but uh, we do have a lot of uh, two-car uh, uh, couples now, and, and uh, in one case, I think even two cars for one person. So um, we have more residents than we have indoor parking spots. So. Um, I have other documentation I'm sure you can find through Ridgefield or I, I can make available, of course. There's been plenty of hearings on it where the Planning Commission has um, recommended to the City Council back then that um, they not rescind these two important things. And so it's important for Woodlake Point. Again, speaking for myself, I'm 100% for the improvements. I don't know a lot about it other than what Melissa had just uh, talked about. Uh, but I support it because I, I think um, Ridgefield's doing a fantastic job and I want to applaud your efforts as a planning commission in making Ridgefield look better. Um, it has not gone by way of a lot of the communities and we appreciate that very much. Uh, we went into a big development project internally because we wanted to make our place inside updated, which we did. We spent uh, um, a couple hundred thousand dollars. We've re redone every common area because we wanted to stay up with what Ridgefield's doing on the outside. So um, thank you very much. Thank you for your comments.
Other members of the public who wish to speak? And if you wouldn't mind uh, saying your name for the record and then signing in once you're done. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Camilo DeSantis. Uh, I live at Villa Shores, 6501 um, Woodlake Drive, apartment 901, Richfield, Minnesota, of course. Um, my wife and I have lived in Richfield uh, since 1956 in a single family home. 57 years later, uh, in the summer of 2013, we moved to Villa Shores. We should have moved much sooner, but circumstances prevented it. We, are, we, uh, we just stayed there in our home and aged just like everybody else, our neighbors and, and everyone. Once there, we were pleased to be part of a friendly and welcoming community. We have a good life there. Great dining room, plenty of activities, and great staff. The changes being proposed will enhance our lives even more with more activity space, a theater, wellness center, a new dining room, private dining room, um, just to name some. I am looking forward to the quote, new, unquote, village shores. I like the way changes are being made to the exterior, especially with the main entrance now facing the plaza inducing more activity and vitality to the corner. It kind of opens it up out into that, that area. Equally important are the continuation of the units for assisted living residents and the addition of memory care. This creates a continuum of care that makes it possible to age in place, which we all talk about, um, and, and without having to move in, in every phase of our uh, later lives. This also addresses the city's recent senior housing study, which recommended more affordable rental units for the elderly, for seniors, memory care, and assisted living uh, for Richfield. For Richfield. One last thought, memory care and assisted living uh, units and um, programs require intensive uh, care, which creates jobs. And I think we need to remember that, that, that this also will create jobs. It's obvious I support uh, these changes to our Villa Shore community. I live there, of course. But you know, tonight we're talking about Briggs and Mort Mortar, but this is a living community. It, the Briggs and Mortar just house us beyond that. Um, you know, we have a great, uh, a great community there. Thanks very much. Thank you for your comments. Others who wish to speak, and I'm, I'm going to ask, I, I see we have a, a fair amount of, of interest, so I'll ask that you keep your comments to under three minutes. Thank you. And if you'd state your name for the record and then sign in once you're completed, my, thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Lillian Johnson. I live next door at Woodlake Point. Just curious, I haven't seen the plan, except oh, on here, the plan. Are any of the existing businesses going to stay, or will they all be gone? Defer to staff on that. Sure, and I'm actually going to defer to the developer on that question. Oh. <laughs> um, just trying to keep track of all the uh, questions that were coming up so I could I could answer them. My name is David Gevers. I'm from EJ Plesco and Associates. Uh, we're the uh, owners, uh, affiliates of the owners uh, of the building. Uh, our founder, uh, EJ Plesco, founded our company in 1976, and this was one of the one of the first projects that was built. Um, in the, in the mid 80s um, and you know when you talked about kind of here we are you know 30 years later sort of visioning this this project and what its potential is um, you know we've really given a lot of thought to you know where this property can be and, and how it should be positioned here for the next 30 years and uh, we think what we've proposed here uh, really does that um, and I you know I, I didn't arrange with a resident who was here speaking before me, but he actually presented a lot better than I could in terms of what it is we hope to achieve there. Um, and, uh, you know, just in terms of providing a place for people to live for uh, even longer than, than, than they're able to now uh, with amenities um, 
that really uh, newer senior housing uh, facilities are providing to their tenants, uh, including wellness center, uh, a fitness center, um, and then that whole concept of continuum of care so that they can um, age in place, um, as well as if they need a higher level of care, they can, they can get that either from assisted living or memory care, which we don't uh, necessarily provide on site right now. Um, so we're really excited about this opportunity for the property and for the city of Richfield. Uh, I guess to answer uh, some of the questions uh, that, that have come up here, so as far as the exi existing businesses, um, the, uh, all the existing businesses that are on the east end of the retail center are going to be remaining. Um, as you know, we have that large vacant space in the middle, which has been vacant for some time since Snyder's um, uh, went out of business. Uh, and then we have a Champs Restaurant, whose lease expires uh, April 1st. Um, and so Champs will, will not be there. Um, some of the other uh, questions that uh, came up, I think, was in regards to the parking um, from next door. We, we did receive from staff some of the, it's always fun to get leafs, reams of like <laughs> documents hand typed from you know, 30 years ago and trying to make sense of it. So we're, we're still reviewing kind of what that, what that means and, and what the obligations are on the property. But obviously we, we seek to, um, you know, um, uh, hold up whatever our responsibilities are under the original agreement. Um, and then I think you asked about the HCMC move. Um, I would say, yeah, we, we should probably direct that to HCMC directly uh, in terms of, you know, what is particularly motivating it. But um, I know they're, they're planning on making some pretty significant improvements um, to the space. Um, they, they really like the idea of having a, a great visibility. And I think one of the things that attracted them to our site in particular um, was this new concept in, um, in, in the healthcare uh, about being in population. And so for us to be a senior housing facility that actually has a primary care clinic sort of in-house, we can literally walk downstairs and go to the pharmacy, is a, is a huge amenity. Um, so we're really looking forward to that partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gevers. And maybe if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, having a seat right behind the podium, just in case there are other questions directed for you, be a little shorter walk. Others, uh, other members of the public who'd, who'd wish to speak? Good evening, uh, Jerry Hoven, uh, lived here in Richfield. Um, <clears throat> I can appreciate the, um, the idea of building our, um, uh, greater areas for our seniors to live. In fact, my mom is on the waiting list um, at Village Shores. However, I'm also a resident here, um, and with the closure of Champs, that's actually going to impact a lot of other people who live here who actually find that place to be a pretty vibrant area for active living, sporting activities. Um, and so I went through the City of Richfield's website to just find out what is Richfield's identity. I, I'm really kind of struggling with that today because with the improvements of the 66th Street that we've all been watching, the demolition of homes and the whole idea was to make that a more walkable and accessible um, area, safer area, but where are they gonna walk to? A medical center? Uh, I, I don't know that that's really the, the idea that maybe Richfield wants for the remaining citizens who live here. The demographics in 2010, I pulled up, 2010 demographics show that there are 5,010 people over the age of 65 in Richfield. Nearly 30,000 Richfield residents are millennials. So I'm not sure what a new health center being built in the city of Richfield, um, where we already have Alina and we have Fairview and we have doctor's offices up and down France Avenue. I'm not exactly sure what Hennepin County Medical Center can add to Richfield that isn't already being covered by these two medical clinics. There are a probably or approximately 20 retirement and assisted living communities just in around this particular area. Uh, I can appreciate the need for continued expansion and finding affordable care for our seniors, but I also know working and living um, and taking care of my own mom, assisted living is about $4,000 a month. That's hardly affordable. The Hennepin County Medical Center currently is, being, is expanding their facility over on 8th, 
8th and Park, I want to say. It's a $220 million clinic renovation, hospital renovation, that is only 7.8 miles away from the city of Richfield. We're on a bus line. I guess my question to the city and to the Planning Commission is where are families and millennials supposed to go for entertainment in the city of Richfield? Currently there aren't any, I mean, Brugger's is closed, now we've got the, um, the um, buffet, the, I can't remember the name of the buffet. Thank you, Old Country is closing, now Champs is closing, and in the meantime we're trying to build up a, a more vibrant community. Uh, Richfield has a really wonderful opportunity to use that existing site and make it available and exciting and enticing for families to want to come and stay and live in Richfield. We don't need another medical community. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and I'll, I'll ask that we hold our applause. Uh, other members of the public who wish to speak? Maybe Michael Allen. I was born and raised right behind this building. Lived here, you know, for the first twenty some years of my life. Uh, one question with the the change here: um, the building can use the renovation. I'm in agreement on all plans. Uh, the building has had an ongoing elevator issue for about five years, and I looked at the plans and I don't see that being addressed. Uh, there's not enough elevators for the people existing in there. If you're going to add fifty more. Uh, units to it, which is fine, but that's approximately another 100 people, plus we're going to go into more assisted care, which is more wheelchairs, uh, more handicap type operations. Uh, elevators become an issue. If you look at the drawing, there's basically one set of elevators, and one of those elevators is a freight elevator. So when someone moves in and out, it's a real problem. Planning-wise, if somebody wants to address that, if there's another elevators being put in that aren't on the drawings, that would be, would be fine. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gevers, is that something you'd like to address? Um, I, we're proposing, and, and on the, the plans, is an additional bank of elevators. So we currently have two elevators, and we're adding two more. So it'll be a total of four. Other members of the public who wish to speak? I think we were going to get a, a view of the new bank of elevators on the overhead cam. <coughs> Oh, is that right here? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's right above you if you leave it on the, the monitor in front of you. New elevators will be placed here. Sorry? The, the plans that are included, just, just to, the, the plans that are included in, your, in the Planning Commission packet are not full building plans that will be issued for permit. So the, all of those details may not may not be visible on the plans that were included in your packet. You you saw the full planning commission submittal, right? Which are not building permit submittals. They are they are separate, and so all of the all of the architectural details and all of the um, you know the electrical, the HVAC, all that kind of stuff is not included in this packet because. It doesn't really inform um, the land use decision, and so those some of those plans aren't even at this point ready. There are elevator, yeah. <laughs> are there any other members of the public who wish to address? It?
Sorry. Which side? <laughs> I'll go. I'll go over this. Either side, side you can reach the microphone. All right. Uh, Joe Hoover, uh, seventy six twenty seven Harriet Avenue. Um, Richfield couldn't support a Dunn Brothers coffee shop in that area, but it can support a dialysis clinic. Village Shores is saying that they're having a problem renting out the old drugstore space. Is adding residents with fixed income and no, little to no spending power going to be an economic boost to the area? When I moved here, I heard a lot of residents saying a lot of racist things, some of the people probably here, about how the blacks and Latinos were moving in and how the hub was dying. And I had to point out to them that it actually wasn't them, but it was rather the fact that Richfield decided that the best way to redevelop its downtown was to build a senior ghetto, was to concentrate high levels of senior housing of people with fixed income in one area. Okay, And that was brought up again and again, and Richfield eventually figured it out. The city council at the time and the planning commission realized and stopped the plans for more senior housing. Okay. They finally did build some housing, the first in, what, decades, that targeted market rate housing to younger people. And that has helped a little bit. We now have Lynn 65, Pizza Luce. But again, both the business owners have acknowledged that one of the reasons why they built there wasn't because of Richfield. It was because we're close to Edina in South Minneapolis, where the money is. Okay. I just want to point out, in this pursuit of people with incomes with fixed incomes or little to no spending power is a very big problem. We need to do, we certainly need to support and help people both who have low income and seniors. But we are a very small community and if we want to pick up the burden and the fair share of other communities, we are going to have some huge problems. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Other members of the public wish to speak? If not, I think we had a motion. Yeah, I move to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to close the public hearing, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, members of the Planning Commission, questions, comments uh, regarding the proposal before us? Commissioner. Uh, um, so, you know, in general, I'm, I'm pleased to see the improvements to the site. It's great to see it remodeled and, and made more relevant to the, the tenants that you feel that are appropriate for today's market. Um, I'm really concerned and dissatisfied, though, with the pedestrian improvements to the site. Um, particularly curious why so many parking spots are being retained when the staff reports describe them as exceeding the need, um, especially when they're actually being brought closer to the corner than the current condition. The current condition has a rel <coughs> relatively large green area back from the corner, which is being eliminated, and I, I do not feel that a trellis over some parking spots really makes it an activated corner, and I'm, I'm really not comfortable with that. My second issue, which is a little bit maybe easier to address, is the, the bike parking seems really inadequate. I see eight spots compared to 250 auto spots, which would be below our standard even if this weren't a PUD development in our downtown area. Um, I would have liked to have seen significantly more, at least um, one bike rack per business entrance. But those are my, my biggest concerns, and the, the pedestrian arrangement feels like a, a deal breaker to me right now. Other comments or questions of planning commissioners? Uh, you know, I, I wanted to um, just comment on some of the comments at you all time, and thank you for coming and speaking. I appreciate that. Um, you know, I really like the continuous of care. I think that's uh, an improvement to kind of the building as it is right now. There is a need for additional um, living facilities for older people. Um, there isn't enough. And I know that there is some plans going on for market rate, um, at the other side of town. So I think as Richville as a whole, we're kind of doing a nice comparison. And um, I'm sad about Champs leaving, but I don't know if we can necessarily impact that here with this plan. Um, I think we've done a great job of having additional restaurants. And I think that HCMC adding in there is a good addition. Um, I didn't even know they were located in the hub. So having that more visible and 
and available to the community, I think is a good thing. So um, the site as it is, I think the improvements we made and um, I actually think the sidewalks are great <laughs> as the addition. So um, I think they're nice. I ride that bus every day and I think that will be an improvement to have that kind of dedicated plan there. Other comments? Yeah, Commissioner I, Rosenberg. Yeah, I just want to say that I'm, I'm going to support this. And I'm really happy that the, the um, clinic is becoming, is moving. I was on the city council when the, the clinic first came to Richfield, and it was a lot of work and a lot of controversy, but I'm really happy that we have that, and it's really an important piece to our community. And um, so anyway, I just want to say that I'm, Champs, I'm sorry that it's leaving. It's not anything that we can really do much about because it is a property uh, decision, owner's decision. But I'm really glad to see that we are improving the, the, uh, the whole area over there. And it sounds like a lot of the residents are really happy about it. So um, I will support this. Other comments? If not, I'd ask for a, a motion to approve the recommended action. I will move to support, uh, to recommend approval of the amended plan unit development, conditional use permit, and final development plan for 6501 Wood Lake Drive. Okay, do we have a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion carries. Okay, the third item on the agenda. Conduct and close a public hearing and by motion. Uh, one, recommend approval of a comprehensive plan amendment changing the designation of 211 76th Street West, 7600, 7608, and 7644 Pillsbury Avenue South and then adjacent 30-foot strip of land from medium high-density residential and right-of-way to high-density high residential. And two, recommend approval of the rezoning of 211 76th Street West, 7600, 7608, and 7644 Pillsbury Avenue South, and an adjacent 30-foot strip of land from industrial and undesignated to planned multifamily residential. And number three, recommend approval of a planned unit development, conditional use permit, and final development plan for an 88 unit assisted living facility at 211 76th Street West, 7600, 7608, and 7644 Pillsbury Avenue South, and an adjacent 30 foot strip of land. Staff to the report. <laughs> In 2007, the Richfield Public Works Department moved to its current location at 1966th Street East. This left the former sites both north and south of 77th Street available for redevelopment. In anticipation of this move, the city partnered with the Center for Neighborhoods and the Corridor Housing Initiative to explore options for this site and surrounding properties. The result was a recommendation for multifamily housing of two to three stories that would blend in with the neighborhood through building and site design. The recommendation envisioned a pedestrian-friendly development that would be affordable to low- and middle-income families and or seniors. The comprehensive plan was updated to designate this area for medium-high-density residential development, similar to the Castile Place development at 76th and Garfield. Last summer, Masaba Capital Development approached the city with interest in constructing an assisted living facility on this site. A joint work session of the City Council, HRA, and Planning Commission was held in August and feedback was generally favorable. A developer-hosted neighborhood meeting was held in September, and again, the feedback was generally favorable. A pre-development agreement between the HRA and the developer was approved in September of last year. Since that time, the developers worked with city staff and the neighborhood to design a project that is both financially feasible and context-sensitive. The developer is proposing an 88-unit, two- and three-story assisted living facility. The L-shaped building allows the bulk of the structure to be set back from the single-family homes along Pillsbury Avenue. Instead, the focus along Pillsbury is the large amount of green space that will be provided. A new sidewalk along Pillsbury Avenue will serve both the development and the surrounding neighborhood, and every effort has been made to be sensitive to the remaining single-family homeowner on this block. 
Access for large vehicles, including deliveries, move-ins move and move-outs, and emergency response has been provided off of 77th Street, thereby hopefully limiting the 76th Street traffic to that more typical of a single-family neighborhood. The proposed unit count does exceed the allowable 24 units per acre in the medium high density district, and that exceeds it by 10 units. The comprehensive plan amendment, there would have to be a comprehensive plan amendment to designate the property for high density housing to move forward. Staff doesn't believe that the additional units as they are proposed are de detrimental to this area or would cause undue additional burden on the site. We're supportive of the amendment and the proposal in general provided that the developer agrees, which they have, to the placement of a restrictive covenant on the land that will limit the use of the property to a maximum of 88 units. Just a couple of policy considerations. A zoning amendment is also necessary. They're typically necessary with a PUD, but in this case, um, it's, it's a little bit more than usual. This site is still zoned industrial, um, which it was for the public works related activities. We've put off changing the zoning while we've been waiting for a viable project so we wouldn't have to rezone twice. The, uh, the developer is requesting a change to the planned multifamily residential district, and the proposal is consistent with, um, in almost all respects with that guiding district. There are just a couple of minor variations. First, there's a west building setback that isn't quite met. First of all, that's along the railroad tracks. Um, these setbacks are meant to be when they're adjacent to other developable land. This is adjacent to railroad right-of-way, so um, whether it's applicable anyway is questionable, but the, the um, two areas where the building encroaches in that setback are a one-story loading dock and the kitchen area, and those have been deliberately situated there. Um, one, to disrupt the um, disturbance to the residential neighborhood, and also to allow easy access to the rooftop equipment needed in the kitchen. The principal entrance orientation, our code requires that buildings be oriented so that at least one principal entrance faces the public street as opposed to the parking lot. The developer is requesting flexibility in order to situate the bulk of the building away from the single family homes, but also to better serve an elderly population. Um, you know, in a in a mixed use or a commercial corridor, I think this is something staff would be more concerned about. In this context, uh, we don't feel that it's critical. And there are some very minimal sign increases requested, and those, again, are just to increase visibility a little bit, make sure people can see the development. It is set back quite far off, 76, so visitors um, will need a good marker there to access the site. And um, on 77th, we'll want to make sure that those deliveries and emergency vehicles know where they're going. Just one other note um, before I turn it over to the developer. The owner um, of, there will be one single family home left on this block. The owner is not interested in selling the property. So in the next couple of months, staff is going to bring forward uh, a motion to rezone and reguide that property as well. But to single family, we're going to make, we're going to propose making that property conforming so that that property owner is able to have the most flexibility possible um, while they continue to live there. And that's it from staff. Um, Della uh, Colpine is here and um, representing the developer. And if you have any questions for her or her partner, um, Go right for it, right. or staff will stand for questions. All right. Thank you, Ms. Palin. Uh, to the developer, did you have any uh, initial or additional thoughts to share before we open it up for public comment? Um, Della Colpine, Masaba Capital Development. I'm at 10700 Normandale Boulevard in Bloomington. And at this point, I think um, Melissa did a great job of giving an overview, so I think we'll just stand ready to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, thank you. Do we have uh, members of the public who wish to comment on the proposal before us? I think once should do it. <laughs> Um, this is a little longer. <sighs> so 
So Village Shores is now looking at expanding and adding a memory care facility at this neighborhood meeting, all right? And you've approved the Village Shore plan. So how, now we have a memory care facility at Main Street Village at 6076 in Lindale, and a proposed, this proposed memory care complex at 66 in Pillsbury. Um, and I'm, forgive me, but I, I do, is the St. Richard's dead? Complete, completely dead. Okay. 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 Again, Richfield is a small city with a diverse but poor population. And pursuing a memory care development at 66 in Pillsbury will be adding residents to Richfield with, again, little or no purchasing power. We do not have residents with income to support businesses. Residents living in poverty in Richfield is at 14.5%. The state average is 11.5%. Edina is 4%. Brooklyn Park, with all of its reported troubles, is 12.3% lower than Richfield's. Adding residents with fixed incomes is going to have an adverse economic effect that would not be the case if we had a larger land area or if we are a wealthier community. We simply cannot support this type of bad development planning. If we're going to continue to pursue development projects for residents with fixed low or no income, we need to have larger area that we can draw on a tax base. So what I'm asking you is to please decline Masaba Capital of Edina's memory care facility request for 76 in Pillsbury and focus on the original plan for the area to develop market rate housing opportunities on the site as proposed and as promised. The residents in the memory care facility will not have any or very little purchasing power. It is a very poor proposal in an area already sporting a senior housing prod complex with memory care and two large-scale 1960s apartment buildings, apartment complexes. I understand that city staff is required to put out all proposals. I find it baffling that these are the only projects that are coming in I know that we have actually brought in possible developers and they haven't, they haven't responded to our requests to have meetings with them. If we don't have staff resources to seek out economic beneficial projects, then let's figure it out. Let's actively seek out the right people for the right positions and empower them to pursue the vision of the citizens of Richfield. Based on our current makeup, and honoring the guidelines of the housing commissioning plan, housing visioning, none of these proposals can be accepted. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Any others who wish to speak in regarding the proposal before us? If not, I'll ask for a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All those in favor of closing the public hearing say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Members of the Planning Commission, questions or comments? Yeah, Commissioner Rosenberg. with attached and detached townhomes. And I think that's really something that should be looked at and seeked out. And it, is, this, is this an impossibility or is this something that we can I'm, look, I'm, wait for? Or sure, I'm gonna like let Karen yeah. Barton, our Assistant Community Development Director, okay. address that. Ms. Barton. Thank you, thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Um, we, we have um, been actively pursuing developers to um, develop 
senior single level townhomes within the city. We don't have a lot of um, sites that are appropriate for those, but on the, the few that we do, we have. Um, one is Sheridan Villas, uh, which is right down by the concierge, former Crossroads Apartments at 76 and um, Russell. Um, that is a, oh, um, yeah. there are five uh, townhomes that are put in there. They're, they offer single level living. Um, the lower, the basement un basements can be filled, um, completed as well as extra living for mm -hmm. um, larger households, but they are um, being developed as single level living um, that would be appropriate for seniors. And three of those are also um, being sold as affordable mm -hmm. to qualifying households. Because when I uh, talk to uh, my peer group these days, that's what they're looking for. They're looking for um, more townhouse, more detached, not so much of the uh, high rise type of thing. And so they're going to other communities. And that would be, you know, people that would be interested in those would speak to some of that market uh, rate type of living that would have that buying p power that was just spoken about. Um, another memory care, um, is this needed? <laughs> I mean, I just, I think what uh, Mr. Hoover said makes a lot of sense in regards to that because we have, how many do we need here? Can we pursue something else on that piece of land? I'm thinking, uh, I'm just thinking about that type of, of a facility in a neighborhood, thinking about ambulances, thinking about fires, you know, I, is this good to have that type of thing that close to residents. I mean, anytime we go by any of Market Square or anything around 66 and Linda, we always see fire engines and, and ambulances, but that's appropriate there because it is a high rise and there's a lot of seniors in that area. I, I'm just really skeptical of this, this uh, development just on the mere fact of the, the numbers. And what is Richfield becoming known for? Are we gonna be just seniors I, I approve the the one at 66 in Lindale because it's already there uh, and it's just an addition uh, to what's already there but to put another one in um, I'm not real crazy about this and I would I might be more inclined to support this if we did have the um, lower density type of senior housing something that would be kind of in between assisted living and single family homes. But this is just a, it's, this is just a hard one to swallow, another mm -hmm. one of these. If, if I might um, add. Ms. Pardon. Thank you. Um, with the Sheridan Villas, um, this, the city, just for those five units, is subsidizing that um, over $400,000 mm -hmm. to get those in there. On um, this property on the former city garage site, um, we have had other development proposals, lower density. Um, mo most recently was about two years ago. There was a proposal for 48 and then 58 um, townhomes. Um, unfortunately, the sale price of those just um, would not work with the cost of the land. It was just not feasible. The developer couldn't move forward. Um, you know, staff, we've, we've looked at, um, you know, maybe doing marketing the property as part of it multifamily and then part of it single family. Um, but again, when we pencil it out, we would have to subsidize that mm -hmm. over a million dollars just to, to be able to get that lower density mm -hmm. on this property. So it's a struggle. And we just feel like um, this, this proposal for the senior housing has minimal impacts to the neighborhood um, you know, for the type of multifamily housing, a lot less than if it was just market rate um, multifamily housing that would have a lot more trip generation. Well, I'm sympathetic because I know the numbers don't lie. I'm an accountant. I know it. But um, it just seems to me that we could find something else there. And I don't, I, um, I we don't have a lot of reason to, not allow this because it, do, it is conforming and it is recommended by staff. Uh, but it's it's just a for me it's just a it's why do we need another one? And that's that's where I'm at with it. Other comments? 
So just to, just to refresh myself, how long as a community have we been trying to shop this parcel to actually make something happen? 2007. So Nothing there. almost 10 years. Almost 10 years of <laughs> trying to find something that would work here. And you know, the last proposal that got close generated a tremendous amount of community churn and you know it was viewed as very negative I think in this instance I think in this instance the uh, item that's being proposed addresses many of the concerns that came up in this or rather in that instance so it, uh, this seems to address many of the points that were raised as a problematic for the last uh, attempt at development. Other comments? Commissioner Breezy Daniels. Um, can you, I have a question about the single family home. You talked about rezoning it later for single family. What is it now? It's industrial, just like the rest okay, of so the block. That, okay, the whole Yep, it's industrial be. and it is guided for medium high density, which you wouldn't be able to do on a single parcel, but the way she is right now, the way that homeowner is right now, She's tied up and really could not do anything. Mm -hmm. So by making her conforming, we'll grant the most flexibility. Perfect. And then I have one more question. So I know when we looked at this at the study session, there was maybe another proposal for another site. But I, and I could be confusing it with this, but I don't love the look of the building. It, it feels like every other kind of apartment complex. And I think in that area... I thought it had a little more like southern charm and looked a little different. Am I confusing that with another layout? The, no, I'm, maybe it's just the colors. The colors have <laughs> changed. Um, I would say that the architectural detail um, is, has significantly improved from those early okay. plans. I'm, I'm not sure if maybe just it used to be taupes and maybe it was just the warmer colors that you preferred. Perhaps. No, I'm thinking okay. of a totally different design then. Okay. Um, so just architectural detail, you know, if we're building from scratch, this again looks like kind of every other unit. And I would like to see something f more fitting, more looking like a neighborhood feel if it is going to be a larger building in there. That's kind of my two cents about the, the design. Um, so my only concern really is that this is sort of an or, and I, I mean the concerns raised by Mr. Hoover and uh, Commissioner Rosenberg that we're not getting enough high spending residents in. And, and what concerns me about this site plan is that the site isn't really, or half of the site isn't really utilized, that the entire east half of the site is empty except for the single family home that remains. And particularly that empty corner on the northeast, on the northeast corner of the site that I'm not sure if the developer, if, if that's gonna be utilized for outdoor space or if that would just be sort of decorative space. But if it's not useful for the residents, I hate to see us having a restriction on this that would prevent them from ever using it by capping it at 88 units despite moving it to high density. So r right now my inclination is that I'd rather not see that in there and allow the option for that to be developed in the future if that's viable. Did you wanna address that at all? Um, again, Della Colpine, I'm a Saba Capital. Um, you know, we've worked with the city uh, staff and actually listened to the policymakers and the neighborhood as far as the number of units um, that would be allowed on the site. I mean, we started at a larger number than actually the 88 when we first had our first meeting. So, um, you know, at this point, if, if that we've committed to making that a restriction at the 88, um, and we stand by that. But we need that number in order to make it work as well. And can I just ask a question of staff? If is it possible down the road to do a PUD amendment to override that, or is that somehow baked in in a permanent way? Commissioner O'Leary, um, yes, the PUD could be amended, and the restrictive covenant could be amended as well. It is more difficult than just amending the PUD. Um, this extra step has been put in uh, as a guarantee to the neighborhood who. Um, it's, it has been our understanding that the neighborhood would um, not be as supportive of a very high density project. And so we've put these limitations on to, um, 
to ease their minds that this is a hard number as opposed mm -hmm. to many multifamily projects which come in and are approved at let's say 88 and then as construction begins there are some um, amendments built into our code that allow a 5% increase without coming back and things like that. So we've, we've capped it here to make sure everybody knows that that is the number and it will not go higher. It could be amended. Other questions or comments from commissioners? Thank you for including the lighting plan. Well, as uh, Commissioner Visecki noted or alluded to, it's been um, kind of a long time since we've seen a proposal that's moved to this point for this parcel. And you know, in regard to the the senior housing conversation, or maybe just the housing conversation, moreover, um, you know, th this is something we're not just wrestling with as a city, but we're wrestling with it as a state and as a country. And, you know, I, we refer quite a bit to the Maxfield Research Report of the City of Richfield, the housing study that was done. They also did one uh, on senior housing specifically statewide. So I'd encourage folks uh, to look that over as well. There's some, you know, rather powerful trends that, you know, we're going to have to confront. Um, and at the pace, you know, we move with policy, it's better we do that now rather than later. You know, one thing that stuck out to me, one anecdote from that report, is that in coming years, we're going to have more individuals over the age of 65 in Minnesota than we are the entire K-12 population. That's unprecedented. And so, I actually, I, I, I get to work on housing as my day job, and uh, every few years, the Wilder Foundation in St. Paul does a statewide study of homelessness. We found that in 2012, uh, households age 55 and older or individuals age 55 and older experienced the largest percentage of increase in homelessness in Minnesota. Now, the raw number remains pretty small, but given coming, de coming demographic trends um, and what we know about the vulnerability of that population, this is something we need to address. And I would argue that Richfield isn't taking on a disproportionate share of that burden, if you will. Um, I think we're doing our share, and I think communities around us are, are doing their share as well. So just because it's senior housing now doesn't mean it needs to remain senior housing into perpetuity. This is something we have to deal with. You know, it sounds like maybe starting around the year 2040, the bur the the burden, if you will, again, will start to ease. And so maybe we can readdress some of these projects at that time. But for right now, this is something that I think we need to wrestle with. So I'm, I'm happy to support this project. So if, with that, if we have a motion. I'll move that we approve the attached resolution finding the sale of 7600, 7608, and 7644 Pillsbury Avenue. And uh, 21, or I'm sorry, 211 76th Street West, as well as the adjacent uh, 30 foot. That's the next item. Oh, That's yep. the next item. Yep, you're one item ahead. I'm one <laughs> item ahead. Yes. I'm always a yes. step ahead. We're on item three. We're on and, item and three. It's inappropriately And to so. make it easier for you, you, you. I move the staff's recommendation. Yes. Yeah, there, yes. Do we second. have a second? Second. Second. I just have a comment. And now uh, the. Um, Chair makes a really compelling argument in, on, in that regard as far as what is needed. But I think one of the key things you just said is that this, and I think it's in the, somewhere in the staff report too, that this project can be switched to more market rate, more family oriented if the need ever changes. And I think that, that kind of makes, a, like I said, a more compelling argument to be in favor for that. Um, I still stand by my first statement that I think we've got a, I would really, I don't know if I totally agree that we are, we have uh, not uh, overdone our memory care units, but like I said, I think you made a compelling argument to approve, so I will vote for this. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. All those in favor, aye. 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 
Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, on to item number four. Commissioner Visecki, did you want to read it again? Well, we can let staff read it. Uh, you know, I, now that we've had the rehearsal on the motion, you know, I, I may move later, but. Sure. Uh, so uh, the recommended action before us is to approve the attached resolution finding the sale of 7600, 7608, and 7644 Pillsbury Avenue South, 211 76th Street West, and an adjacent 30-foot strip of land to Masaba Capital Development, LLC, for the construction of an 88 unit assisted living facility is consistent with the comprehensive plan to staff. Thank you. So state statute requires that the planning commission make a finding whether or not any land disposition co conforms to the comprehensive plan of the city. As part of the last motion, you moved that the land would be reguided to uh, high density multifamily residential. Now you're asked to find that the sale by the HRA to the developer of that land for the development of high density residential is consistent with that amendment. Thank you, staff. Uh, this is a public hearing, so if anybody has. Uh, Actually, this one's not. This one's not. Right. I apologize. Oh, we're under the. the sta okay. Not a public hearing. Uh, do we have uh, questions or comments from commissioners? I think it would be silly if we didn't approve it at this point. Okay. <laughs> A comment. <laughs> All right. With that, uh, do we have a motion to approve uh, the recommended action? I'll go shorter this time. I move that we find uh, the consistency and, and allow the sale. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And Chair Kitzberger, I just want to apologize. There were some. <laughs> There was an error in the staff report. That's why you thought it was a yeah. public hearing. Oh, it hearing. yes, it's that's that's our fault. It is not a public hearing, but okay. It's, it's well, us, I'm just looking you. at the the sidebar yep. portion of it here. Um, so on to item number five: the election of a planning commission chair, uh, vice chair, and secretary to staff. Right, so you are all veterans of the commission, so I don't think I need to go through all of this now, but every year our bylaws require that we elect a new chair, vice chair, and secretary. Um, we do not generally do this by secret ballot. We tend to do it by voice vote. If you'd like to do secret ballot, we can. Otherwise, um, the floor is open for nominations. Um, I'd like to make a nomination of Aaron Vries Daniels as chairperson. Well, I would like to nominate Dan. I I'll second both of those. Fantastic <laughs> job. <laughs> and I know Chair Jebs does not want to continue. So, well, as he has stated. So, what are we doing? Yeah. Do we so, vote? are there any other <laughs> nominations for chair? Right now, it's uh, Commissioner Kitzberger and Commissioner Breezy Daniels. I move we close nominations. All right. Okay. Second. So uh, votes for Commissioner Kitzberger. So if you would raise your hand. And votes for Commissioner Reezy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Commissioner Reezy Daniels. Sounds good. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up is Vice Chair. We're open for votes. Or for nominations, rather. I would like to nominate uh, Sean Hayford O'Leary as vice chair. Second. Third. <laughs> <laughs> Any other nominations? All right, all for a vote. Uh, Commissioner Hayford O'Leary. And we have it, congratulations. And lastly, secretary. I nominate Gordon. I think he's done a fine job. <laughs> Second. It's a tough gig. <laughs> <laughs> Any other nominations? All right, all for Commissioner Vizecki. All right, congratulations everyone. You take office immediately. <laughs>
Um, Commissioner Jabs has the gavel in his trunk, so we'll have to do that ceremony at the, <laughs> at the March meeting, I assume? Yes, yes. yes. So with that, we'll move on to item six, which is uh, liaisons. So we are asked to approve members to serve as a liaison and alternate liaison to the Community Services Advisory Commission, the City Council, the Housing and Redevelopment Authority, the School Board, and the Transportation Committee. Staff, anything to add? Just one note. We did talk to the um, Community Services Commission, and that, that is the only commission where we have an alternate liaison, and we um, decided to remove that. We figured it wasn't necessary, unless someone is dying to be an alternate liaison to community services, and we've filled everything else, then we can certainly continue to do so. Otherwise, we're just looking for one. I propose that we keep our current um, um, our current appointments. As, appointments. Yeah, appointments. Thank you. Unless anyone wishes to change, is that a motion? That's a motion. I'm all second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Uh, the motion carries. To keep current appointments. Uh, item seven, which is planning commission bylaws. So the recommended action is that we review the attached Planning Commission bylaw amendments. Uh, we suspend Rule Part 3, Section 2, requiring presentation of proposed amendments at a previous meeting, which requires a two-thirds vote of members present, and to approve the attached Planning Commission bylaws, which requ requires two-thirds vote of commission members uh, to staff. Thank you. So there are actually a number of changes proposed to the bylaws this year. This is uh, mostly due to the fact that there was a comprehensive review of all commission bylaws by the city council, and uh, you were given the opportunity to provide feedback on some of those. So a, provide, uh, a summary of the proposed changes um, is as follows. Specific reference to the general requirements of the city code have been added. Uh, that addresses items like residency, term limits, uh, vacancies, things like that. Section, a uh, section related to deadlines has been removed. That's covered by the zoning ordinance. Um, rather than when we change the zoning, zoning ordinance, all of a sudden realize that this conflicts. It should just be um, ruled by the zoning ordinance. Rules of procedure subsection has been removed. Um, again, that's something that's been covered by the city code. Election of officers. I've revised that uh, to remove the requirement for balloted voting since we haven't done that for at least 10 years. We've removed the requirement for two readings of proposed bylaw amendments. That's what this rule suspension is about. Right now, our bylaws require that we propose amendments, introduce and discuss amendments at one meeting, and then wait for a vote at the next meeting, sort of a first reading, second reading kind of thing. Uh, it's unnecessary. It's burdensome. The city attorney has reviewed it. She's not sure why it's in there to begin with. It's, I, I think it's... Um, it's sufficient to discuss it at one meeting. Have you vote, two thirds vote is still required. And then just a couple of other little housekeeping items. Any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. I guess having, having read other bylaws of other commissions and, and other organizations, I, I don't think it's that uncommon to require a first reading of bylaw changes. And I, is it that burdensome to just do it again next month? <laughs> I feel kind of pedantic, but I guess especially with two members not present, I, do, I don't see why we don't just, you know, all the changes look fine. I don't see why we don't just vote on it next month. You, you certainly could vote against the motion to suspend the rules. No, it's not that burdensome, except that the uh, city council has asked us to adopt the amendments as soon as possible so everybody's in conformance. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a big deal if you want to delay a month. Commissioner Vasecki. Feeling reckless and drunk with power. <laughs> yeah. I, I move <laughs> approval of the bylaws. Yeah, dead of the night kind of yes. stuff. Yeah. And I'll second that. All right, all, uh, all those in favor of the Aye. recommended action? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. On to item eight. This is the last item, which is 2016 uh, study session topics. I can get to the right. Uh, to staff. 
Thank you. So this is just kind of a running list of things that might come up or that we thought we would probably like to talk about with you more this year. Um, discuss ordinance changes related to simplified or streamlined approval processes for certain land use applications. This is something that um, has come up a number of times now with some of the simple applications that come before both the Planning Commission and the City Council where it's kind of like, well, yeah, why did we need to go through this just for a small um, accessory structure construction kind of thing? Seems like a lot of work. So streamlining, making it easier for applicants, not, um, not making it such a big deal to come before both bodies. Discussing some sign regulations, specifically sandwich board signs. This comes up every couple of years, um, but we'd like to talk about it again and just see if maybe some uh, changes to those rules are in order. Considering allowances for light industrial uses. Again, this is something that has been uh, on our radar for a couple of years here. We have all but eliminated, actually, with the rezoning earlier tonight, we no longer will have any industrial properties in the city. So, but we do still have an industrial district, and occasionally there are uses that come up, um, food product manufacturing, um, some light industrial uses that come up that don't really fit in our current categories, used to fit in industrial, and now we don't have any properties that accommodate them. So perhaps carving out a new district, reworking that district, or just accommodating some of those lighter uses in our general commercial districts. We'd like to take another look at that. We're open to ideas for a walking and biking tour. We did not do one last year. Uh, we've kind of, we've had a lot of projects in the pipeline, but very little has been built um, over the last, well, very little has been built that could be a coherent biking and walking tour. Um, we're also open to the idea of a commissioner-led tour. We have some bike advocates on our <laughs> planning commission now, and if someone would like to take that on, staff would certainly be willing to talk to them about that. Um, I, we are going to have another joint meeting with Edina and Bloomington Planning Commissions. I think everyone found that useful. Edina has offered to host again. And then we typically do recreation and transportation updates as time allows. If there are other things um, that you have been thinking about, we'd like to hear them now. Or you can always email me throughout the year if something comes up and we can try to fit those on the schedule. Um, I, I did mention this last year. Unfortunately, we didn't get to it. I, I would like to see us address our bike parking requirements, um, especially because right now it's tied to the number of auto parking spaces, and we have been looking at relaxing that for certain areas, which would throw off our bike parking requirements. But I think we're a little bit behind the times compared to some of our neighbors, and I'd like to see us talk about that. Yes, that is on our list. Thank you. I'm excited for the Dana Bloomington. I thought that was a really great meeting and fascinating to see what the other cities that are close to us work on. And is Edina really going to host again? Yes. Huh? Mm -hmm. they, um, they've offered to host again because they dropped the ball, and that's uh. why we didn't have a meeting for a few years. <laughs> other, uh, other topics? Okay, and does, this doesn't require any action on our part, does it? It doesn't. Okay. Uh, with that... Uh, we will move on to old business, which there is none, uh, so on to liaison reports. Uh, Community Services Advisory Commission, any report? City Council. No report. No report. HRA. No report. No report from the school board. Uh, I, I mean, I, I assume folks saw the article that ran about the, the clinic opening up in Richfield High School. Uh, that that came before us. Was it summer? Last what? summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did that just open? I missed that article. Nice. Was it last week that ran? But it opened in January. Okay. Transportation Commission. Um, the main discussion was the desire to create a citywide pedestrian plan to go into the comprehensive plan. Right now, we have a very sort of vague future sidewalk map, but it's not very specific. So it was discussed how we would approach that, how to think about making a coherent network, and then also some ideas that our new um, transportation engineer had for creating 
sort of temporary short-term sidewalks um, on some of the streets that really desperately need it, like uh, 69th Street west of Penn Avenue, so. And lastly, Chamber of Commerce. A report. Okay. City Planner's report. I don't have any report other than to say that a uh, joint meeting that's listed on your agenda is to discuss on March 8th is to discuss the Cedar Corridor Master Plan, the updates since your last meeting, and uh, a revised plan from Interstate Partners, the developer who is interested in the four parcels of land at the southwest corner of um, the roundabout near Richfield Parkway. There, there will also, just forecasting this for you, there'll be a neighborhood open house about the Cedar Corridor Master Plan that's scheduled for Thursday, March 10th from four to seven um, at Mount Calvary Lutheran Church. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Paleman. Uh, with that, do we have a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, meeting is adjourned.